You're listening to the Option Alpha Podcast from OptionAlpha.com, where we show you how to make smarter trades, learn how the stock market really works, and generate consistent monthly income. Monthly income. Now, your host and head trader at OptionAlpha.com, Kirk Duplessis. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com, working every single week to make this the most popular investing podcast offered in iTunes and online because it's based on one thing and one thing only, and that's helping you make smarter trades. So thanks so much for tuning in here again today, and I've got a really quick episode hopefully today to kind of cover a topic that I get a lot of questions on and it doesn't really apply to us, meaning as an options trader and is not a day trader and what we do, we don't usually tend to uh, run into this a lot, but I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately and I wanted to do a quick show to cover it because I think it's an important topic and again, you can do your own digging after this. So the thing that we're going to talk about here today is pattern day trading rules or being labeled as a PDT, which is a pattern day trader. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is that this rule only applies for accounts with less than $25,000 of equity and really anyone who is an active trader. So I don't even think any people who are not active traders will be even listening to this podcast. But if you are and you're not an active trader, meaning you don't make trades all the time and especially don't make day trades, then it doesn't apply to you. If you've got more than $25,000 of equity in your account, it doesn't apply to you. It's only for anybody who has got under $25,000 of equity in their single account. Now, in terms of equity, this does mean that it could be a combination of equity in cash and eligible securities, whether that's stocks or options. It's $25,000 of basically account value that you have. Now, the main rule in pattern day trading that was put out is that you're allowed to do three day trades in a five day trading period. If you make the fourth day trade in that five day trading period, then you're permanently tagged in your broker platform as a pattern day trader until you get your account over that $25,000 limit. So let's back up here a little bit. And I guess the question now is, well, what, number one, what is a day trade? Now, day trade, in terms of how FINRA is going to describe it, is an entering order and an exiting order of the same security or same underlying in the same day. So in the case of making a day trade in stock, you would buy 100 shares in the morning and you would sell 100 shares in the afternoon of the same stock. That would be a day trade. It does not mean that if you bought shares, let's say, on Monday and then sold shares on Tuesday, that would not be a day trade because you're not buying and selling in the same day or the same market session. And also, it doesn't matter if you're doing it pre-market or post-market, if you have that ability, it doesn't matter. It's all the same day session. Now, this also applies to options contracts as well because as an options trader, this is what we're mainly concerned about is, you know, are we going to hit this limit? So options contracts also apply if you buy an options contract or a spread and then you sell back that options contract or spread in the same day, that would be one of your day trades. Now, again, the main rule is that you're allowed to do three day trades in a five day trading period. So basically in every single week that you trade, you're allowed to do three day trades if you need to. You can get in and out, in and out, in and out as many times as you want in that security up to three times for that five day trading period. It's only when you hit the fourth day trade in that five day trading period that you get tagged as a pattern day trader. Now, the question now becomes, well, what does this mean? Like what happens if I get tagged as a pattern day trader? In most cases, what it means is that you can you can still enter new trades, but you are going to be restricted in your ability to get out of trades. So if you're tagged as a pattern day trader in your broker account, you can still enter new positions. You can still get into a new contract or option spread. You can still buy stock. You just won't be able to get out of that position in the same day until the account restrictions are lifted or until it's the next day. Now, some brokers are a little bit different, so you're going to want to check with your broker for the exact rules. I know that most brokers will possibly allow you to unwind that position the next day, or they'll give you a warning at first. So again, it's going to be a little bit different depending on brokers, and they can have their own little overlays and restrictions on top of this. But basically, you can still enter positions. You just won't be able to exit them. So a couple questions that come up from people usually around this topic are, first, What if I enter 10 contracts in the case of options, but then I close them one at a time? Now, the way that most brokers are going to treat this is that they're not going to treat it as pattern day trading if you enter all 10 contracts at one time 
and then you single-handedly close out one contract at a time because your intent is to exit the whole position. So they basically consider your entry of 10 contracts as the new position that was entered. And then as you close out, whether you close them out one at a time or two groups of five or five groups of two, whatever it is, your intent is to get out of that original position. So that would be considered one day trade if you were to enter 10 and then however you exit the other 10, you just did it all in the same day. Okay, so it's not going to be considered as pattern day trading. And again, this is also true of recognized option spreads. So things like iron condors, iron butterflies, straddles and strangles, credit spreads, debit spreads, and calendars. If you enter the entire spread and then you close out of the entire spread, just because you have all these different individual contracts does not mean that each one of those contracts is going to count for day trades that you can make in that five day trading period. So that's the important thing is that the brokers and and the regulators do recognize some of these spreads and some of the intent that you have in closing out a position. Now, what happens if you can't close out or you don't have the ability to do it or you get tagged? In most cases, you're gonna get what's called a day trading margin call for lack of buying power. Now, from here, it gets a little bit dicey on which brokers have different requirements. Some brokers will require that you deposit more money to get your buying power up to that $25,000 limit or to cover the buying power for the the day trading that you have been doing within the next 24 hours. Some brokers give you five days. Some brokers, I think TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim, also overlay a 90-day kind of suspension and review period where they kind of track your account and you know, just make sure that you're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing if you've got under $25,000. But again, it's different by broker. Make sure that you just have a quick chat with them online, know exactly what they're doing, what their policy is so you don't run into it. Now, the other thing is that your broker should also show you the number of day trades that you have left. So they're always able to keep and monitor and track this on a rolling basis. I know, again, I use Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade and right inside of the platform in like the account info section, I can see if I've ever made any day trades recently, how many day trades I have left to make. So it'll show me two or three or whatever the case is in that five day rolling period. Whatever your broker uses, make sure that you know exactly where that is so that you can track it so you don't get tagged as a PDT if you're under $25,000. Now to kind of close this out here before we get into a possible day trade, that we might be looking at here in the closing bell segment, I want to just tell you that I think for most people out there, you don't need to be a day trader. In fact, I think in the way that I trade, even though I enter a lot of positions every single day or may close out of positions every single day, it's not day trading because I'm not getting into and out of the same position. We are monthly position traders, meaning I'll enter into a couple trades today and may close them out a week or two weeks or three or four weeks out in the future. And the same day that I close out those positions, I'm getting into new contracts for the next month or for the next two months. And so I think that really works pretty well. I don't think that there's ever really a need to be an aggressive day trader in this market, especially with options. You you gotta play the numbers and the probabilities And there's just not this requirement to be a day trader. I think it's good that you're allowed those three day trades in that five day trading period. If you do happen to kind of goof up, I think that's where most people end up, you know, kind of running into this as a new trader is, and I've done this myself where sometimes I'll goof up and enter an order completely wrong. I'll go right back in and close out that order because that's not exactly what I wanted to do. So I'll use up, you know, one of these day trades and then, you know, have, you know, only a couple left. So I think that that's where most of this happens And you just have to understand kind of what the rules are and regulations around it so that you know how to navigate the waters appropriately in the future. But again, the key point here is that if you're an options trader, if you're trying to do this on an income basis, using options for monthly income, there's no requirement or need to be a day trader. So you can pretty much avoid this. Hopefully this podcast was just helpful in just understanding what the rules are and basically what can go wrong, if anything. So let's get into the closing bell segment and look at a new earnings trade that we're actually going to be making. Now, the closing bell. Find out which stocks we're looking at right now, trades we're making, and hear our game plan moving forward. All right, so in today's closing bell segment, I want to look at an earnings trade that we're going to be possibly making here in WFM. This is Whole Foods Market. Now, Whole Foods 
historically has been a very volatile stock around earnings. Sometimes it moves anywhere from 4 or $5 after earnings. Lately, the last two or three earnings cycles, it hasn't actually moved all too much, but implied volatility has dropped considerably after earnings, as it usually does with any earnings trade. As soon as we get that earnings announcement, the next day, implied volatility drops. The value of these option contracts go down exponentially because of that volatility drop that comes. Now, in this case, I thought it was kind of interesting that we talked about this type of trade because this is a shorter duration or time period trade where we're actually going to be entering this trade at the end of today. Today is Wednesday, May 4th. Whole Foods actually announces their earnings after the close today on May 4th. And so we're going to be exiting the trade tomorrow morning at the open, hopefully at a profit. Now, the key here is that this is not tagged as a day trade. And that's the distinction I wanted, I think, you know, to use this as an example here with this podcast, because we're not entering the trade and exiting it the same day. We're entering the trade on Wednesday and we're exiting the trade hopefully on Thursday at a profit, or even if we exit at a loss, we're exiting it on Thursday. It's not tagged or considered a day trade for the purposes of pattern day trading rules or PDT rules. So this is a really cool example of how you can do this. Even if you have a small account, you can do a trade like this under $25,000 account and don't have to worry about these pattern day trading uh, requirements. Now, at the time that we're doing this podcast, Whole Foods is trading at 28.53 and has been pretty calm today and implied volatility is in the 72nd rank. So very high implied volatility, definitely in the top end of the implied volatility spectrum over the last year. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go in and try to make a trade on the earnings announcement. Now, We want to do this trade close to the end of the day so that we are as neutral as possible to the stock move. We don't really care where the stock moves, just we know that long term it's always going to move less than expected given many, many, many different opportunities to trade this. And since the stock is basically trading about $28.50 or so, we're going to start by selling the $28.5 straddle. And we're going to do this on the weekly contracts that actually expire on Friday. Now, with earnings trades, we always try to do them on the front most contracts because those contracts have all the implied volatility and earnings juice. That's where all the activity is trading in the contract month. So whether that ends up being the monthly contracts, if an earnings date happens to be the week of expiration or the weekly contracts, we're going to trade the front most contracts. Now, these contracts have two days till expiration, so they're going to have a very quick, very rapid drop in value once the stock actually opens up tomorrow after it's announced earnings. So again, stock's trading at 28.50. We're going to sell the 28 and a half straddle to begin with. And the value that we get for that 28 and a half straddle is about $2.60. And that's about what we expect the stock to move. The market maker move or the earnings expected move in the stock is about $2.40 right now. So we're getting a little bit more premium than the actual expected move that the market's pricing in. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to take some of that premium and we're going to buy wings out on each end a little bit further out so that we have the opportunity to create a risk defined iron butterfly. So we sold the 28 and a half straddle, the both the call and the put. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move out on the top side up to the 33 calls. Now those calls are trading for about 13, 12 dollars right now. So very cheap protection, but they prohibit any more risk in case the stock moves beyond 33 to the top side. On the bottom side or below the market, we're going to move down to the 24 puts and equal distance out from the 